golf fanatics it's billy ho here once again for a preview and research show this week's masters has been a really awesome week uh one of the better watches i think i'm really uh some people may not like the difficult windy conditions because their golfers are are struggling or one minute they're two under par and then the next minute they're four over par but the difficult conditions were uh thursday and friday windy gusting hard blowing sand Rom uh, stated that they may, they were really kind of close to pulling everybody off the course because of the wind. And I get it. I mean, if you got sand blowing all over the place and then there's all kinds of pollen, you know, stuff out in Augusta, Georgia and everything, it was probably uh, a couple of bad situations, but they played it through. So even with the wind playing nice on Saturday, Augusta was really showing its teeth. It was a pretty tough round. Uh, star-studded front page of the leaderboard going into Sunday. I, I would say anyone within three to five shots of Scotty Scheffler at seven under might have a chance, but can anybody really conceive Scotty Scheffler shooting much over par if all? You know, maybe he shoots 73, 74 at the very worst, and then that, that way somebody can maybe catch him. But I, I don't think he's going to shoot it. Seven's going to be your number. I don't see how I could see him shooting 71 or 70 and eight or nine under. Uh, double digits, I think you're going to be in sitting in Butler cabin. If, if anybody can get the 10 under by some miracle, you know, besides the top couple of guys, Colin Morikawa is right there. He's been a pleasant surprise this week. I, I decided to pull the trigger on him. I haven't gotten him right in DFS. Uh, seems like in forever. But I did decide to play him in a few lineups this week, and he's paying off for me. Not really correlating into my better lineups because I've got those guys like Connors and Lowry that are just shit in the bed, and Thorborn Olison, who I thought might have a good week, is is uh, falling on his face too. So I'm probably not going to be GPP winning lineups, but I think they'll cash out nicely. Uh, so uh, if Colin Meyer. Co- if Colin Morikawa can somehow win this golf tournament, I do have a lineup with him and Scheffler together, which will be very nice. So anyway, Max Homa is in there as well, who who's another guy that just uh, seems like he's uh, hadn't been able to figure out his way around the Masters. I think he finished like 48th. I don't think he's had a top 40 in the two times he's been here, two, three times, miscut too. But he's figured out something this week. He is down with uh, – down with it this week, that's for sure. He's driving the ball and putting the lights out. And uh, what about the debut by Ludwig Olberg? I mean, his driving, ball striking, great. But he's adapted so well to this golf tournament. I think he was like under uh, – he was real low greens and regulation on Thursday. But he was 13 of 18 on Saturday, putting the lights out too. Uh, I think he's uh, 1.5 putts per hole no three putts on the week. So this will be the real tester for him. See how he handles the pressure. He is paired with Max Homa, which I think will actually benefit him with his nerves and whatnot. Then you have uh less than beefy Bryson. Uh, wow. This Thursday with that 65, but he got to go out in the early conditions, those early Thursday guys, that was the best three hours of, of conditions. These golfers had all week long. So he did take advantage, shoot 65, can't fault him for that, but he hasn't broke par since then. Uh, he's now minus three going into today, and he's going to have to go under 67 probably to get close. Uh, Xander Schauffele, who I played one and done, uh, another oh well top five to top ten finish at the Masters. Allergic as all get out to birdies this week. He's had two birdies in each of the three days. Six total birdies, only four bogeys. He went bogey-free Saturday. So he had two bogeys Thursday, two bogeys Friday, a go along with the birdies. He's been playing almost flawless golf, just not upside golf. So that's just what it is. Uh, not making any pre- predictions for the Masters. Just looking forward to a good Sunday finish. Uh, a few quick announcements before we get started. My weekly contest, Billy Ho by Free Drop Billy. 
Uh, now up to 75 entrants, five-way payout. Uh, great way to support the channel, uh, joining uh, the DraftKings contest. So uh, be sure to do that every week. I'll post it when it comes out. Uh, also, horse racing fans, Kentucky Derby's right around the corner coming up in a few weeks. Triple Crown uh, underway. My playlist is loaded. Check it out. Check out all my content on the Derby. And uh, now let's get into this week's event. This week, we do head to Harbortown Golf Links in South Carolina for the RBC Heritage. Uh, this is a $20 million uh, signature event, 3.6 to the winner, exactly the same payout as the Masters uh, as far as the, the, the total purse and the winner. Uh, standard 36 hole cut, but it is going to be that limited field of qualifiers, 65 to 70 players with the with the uh, Aeon 10 and Aeon, Aeon the Aeon or whatever it is. Uh, but it's the top 50 from last year and all that good stuff. So about 65 to 70 players. Uh, Harbor Town, Link style golf course designed by Pete Dye. Uh, requiring well-rounded game, strong course management, obviously the ability to adapt to some new unique challenges and, and positions on the golf course. Uh, H-Town is a par 71, stretches about 7,200 yards, but not really a short golf course. Uh, fairways are narrow, tree lined, uh, strategically placed bunkers in those fairways. Also, the ones that guard the greens can be particularly difficult. Uh, accuracy is off, uh, is important, but it is up. They club down uh, to hit these fairways. But regardless of fairway, uh, you really need to play the ball to the best angles into the greens. Uh, the front nine plays easier than the back nine. Obviously, the two par fives. Of the three are on the front nine. I believe one of the holes might be drivable. The ninth hole, maybe. I can't recall, uh, depending on where they set the tee boxes up. No advantage to starting on 10, really. Uh, you want to be a couple under par, I think, making that turn. Because you have four straight par fours, then a par three to start your back nine. So you don't even see a par five, you know, until, what, 15, I think. Uh so, well, 10, 11, 12, anyway, makes it harder uh, to make up for any big numbers you made earlier, uh, that one par five coming home. Then you have the finishing 18th hole, which is visually stunning with the top, with the uh, big lighthouse in the background and, and uh, the way that dog legs out to uh, the impressive wide landing area that's just to the right of uh, what they call the Cala Bogey sound so your approach better not go left or you're going to be cow a bogey screwed uh you could take the bailout area right but if you don't hit the green it's a really challenging up and down for par so aptly named cow a uh, bogey sound I like to say that harbor town's greens are obviously tiny they're not uh they're just a couple hundred square feet bigger than pebble beach 3700 poa overseed uh, which is interesting. I'll have a comment on that in a little bit. So stick around. We're going to get into some models. Fantasy National drives uh, the new uh, Billy Ho uh, videos, so to speak. So anyway, we're going to get into these well-guarded bunkers, water hazards on every hole. You need a well-rounded tee to green game to get it done around here. So anybody gaining double digits tee to green is going to be looking to be in the mix for sure. So now, like I said, let's go to Fantasy National and look at some stats. First off, I always like to go to the uh, tournament history. And uh, this, this is also a uh, pretty good uh, course history matters type of golf course. And uh, so I wanted to look at, see uh, some of these guys that are up top. This is, I always sort it by strokes gain total. Patrick Cantlay, uh, who, for a guy who hasn't won here, has the best uh, strokes gain total. Uh He's always seems like he's in the mix to win. Matt Fitzpatrick won here last year. JT Poston has several top fives. Uh, we'll talk about him as well. Cam Davis having a very nice Masters week. Plays well here. Uh, Corey, obviously, guy of ball strikers are going to play well here. So, Corey Connors, Brian, or Tommy Fleetwood, Grio. Uh, Jordan Spieth is going to be a guy that we're going to be interested in, maybe. We'll talk about him in a minute. I got uh, some really cool video on him from the Masters, so uh, stay tuned. 
And then uh, experience off the tee, obviously, we want to go over to the breakdown here and look at the, the holes. Uh, so it starts you off, you know, you got a couple of doable holes. Obviously, the easiest, number two, must birdie, uh, must birdie hole. But you can see you got the set 13, 17, 16, and 18 all on the front nine, all the easiest holes, high percentage birdies. Uh, then you uh, make this turn on the back nine, and then you go, uh, you go one, two, three, four, five, and you don't see a par five till the 15th. And this par five is actually not particularly the easy one either. It's 588 yards. It only has a 26% birdie uh, making. So that's like par fours, like the par four uh, ninth hole has a higher birdie percentage. So you got to keep that in mind coming home. And then that 18th hole will get you. Uh, we talked about that too. So uh, looking at all these holes, you got some of the, most of them are kind of doable with your, you know, 12 to 15 to 16%. The, the sub 400 yard par fours are always going to be your ones that you'll have the best chance on. So getting into what it will take to be a top finisher, this is the top 10 finishers. Obviously it's a ball strikers type of course, but the approach game is going to be needed. Uh, three putt avoidance is always a thing, but not a big deal on these greens. This is one of the lower three put putt uh, just by surface. You know, it's hard to three putt on tiny greens. I would say uh, fairways gain. I mean, greens gain. Greens gain by finishing position. That's going to be a big one. Uh, here's your whole composition. So you can see most of them are are pretty decent length. You've got four that are 450 to 500, not a short golf course. Uh, and then uh, there's only just a, a couple that are uh, under 400. And then obviously due to these longer par fours, you're going to have longer approach shots. So you got 150 to 175, 175 to 200 are your uh, main buckets. Obviously 125 to 150. Uh, and you're going to have a wedge or two here or there with the short par fours, uh, most definitely. And then uh, driving accuracy, you can see is up a little bit because of the clubbing down process. And then uh, the green and regulation way down obviously scrambling up. So keep an eye on all these. Here's your average three putts per round. Obviously that's down. Uh, driving distance way down, obviously. So that's, uh, that's that moving over into model territory. I was looking at Matty Fitz and him here, there. All right. This is the first model that I had did, I just did last 24 rounds. I did make the time frame last two months to weed out any noise uh, because sometimes these guys don't play as often as we do and they might have a fantastic four round stretch at the RB or at the uh, RSM classic last fall or some shit. And I don't want that bleeding into my model. So if I were to uh, show you this model, I got, Pretty good percentages. I didn't weight anything on the proximity or the par three because I didn't want it to static up the with too much spread out. But I mean, obviously, these are all the stats you want to look at. Good drives I used uh, rather than any other thing. Strokes gained approach. I have heavy weight, heavy weight on greens gained. Uh, around the greens, always important. And then you got uh, par five, obviously, birdie or betty, DK. 10 to 15 feet is where you get those opportunities gained. So I put those two together. And then the, obviously the T to green game, like I said, and then I just wanted to see where these buckets landed. I, I sometimes I'll sort by them just to see if maybe you got two guys that overlap, like here's a six and a five Ludwig, obviously he's going to be very popular this week. So that's for, uh, for sure. So getting into players. Victor Hovland has already withdrawn. You saw he had a not a good match. He has been playing good at all this year. I think he's been battling an injury. I want to say maybe a, like a wrist injury or something like that. Not 100% sure, but he's really been having some trouble with his swing, and he missed the cut. And uh, so he's going to withdraw from this tournament and I guess heal up or regroup, whatever, but he's out. So, like I said, Patrick Cantlay, Matty Fitz, Patrick Cantlay has some of the best course history here. 
but he doesn't rank very highly in the model. I think uh, Cantlay ranks uh, uh, somewhere way down here, you know, in like uh, 30th to 50th. Yeah, there he is. But he is a uh, mixed condition uh, model. He's ranking up there pretty high, but he's just not been playing very well. And here's why. I just wanted to look. Uh, so he lost 6.4 strokes on approach. Uh, and I weighted approach heavily in that model. So for one four-round golf tournament, losing 6.4, then he lost 3.5. He lost 10 strokes on approach in his last two golf tournaments prior to the Masters. That explains everything to me. Uh, he's playing a lot better at the Masters. He's probably going to get a top 10. Uh, we haven't really seen much of him this week, but he is uh, grinding his way there. Matt Fitzpatrick is kind of similar boat. He's been getting it done with the putter. Uh, he hasn't been tearing it up. He has done okay with the fifth and the tenth, but it has been lenient on the putter. So he's going to be an interesting candidate. We already spoke about uh, – my man, Jordan Spieth, and uh, not really sure what to do with him this week. He won here in 2022. Then he lost a playoff here to Fitzy last year. His two rounds at the Masters were bad, but his week was over after this shot on 15 Thursday. Take a listen. Amazing. Wow. I mean, the, just to have that ball trickle off the green and that just ruined. He ended up shooting a nine quad bogey on that hole, ruined his weekend. He shot 79 uh, for the for the day. Then he came back yesterday or Friday and shot 76 or something. You could tell he was just like, I'm not I'm never going to come back. Uh, I need to just regroup for next week, which he may do. Maybe it will come in at some better ownership. That's always a good thing. Uh, so this is the mixed condition model. And uh, I, I kind of left it mixed with uh, the stuff from uh, Masters. So I did strokes gain approach last 24, heavily weighted. Around the green last 50, I got multiple courses. And I chose similar courses with shaved down greens. Uh, but I might tweak that one, birdie or better. I put easy to average fairways, uh, but the, the course length is over 7,400, so I probably need to change that. But just things of that nature, I, I just wanted to get, and this is a tee to green, last 24 at Harbortown, so course history. So that, that's just kind of the thing I like to do. And and when I go to look at this, I always do like to compare the uh, mixed conditional rank to the model rank. Obviously, he's double ones, Scotty too hottie. Um, going to be a hard out to beat at the Masters. I'm not going to say it's over, but when you got Scotty Scheffler on the leaderboard and he's uh loses, you know, he makes a double bogey and then 10 seconds later, he's right back in the lead. He made that eagle. Uh, I forget on, uh, I want to say 13 over the uh, water, but I, uh, I can't remember now. It might've been 15, but he rolled in a long eagle putt. Uh, to to get the two shots he had just dropped right back. <laughs> so he's really just an amazing talent when it comes to that. But when you got guys like uh, Wyndham and Xander, and, you know, it's going to be a star-studded field for sure. So uh, a lot of guys to look at, and I uh, just wanted to kind of compare. This is the mixed condition model ranking. Uh, obviously, I need to make some adjustments. Justin Thomas has not been playing well at all. I can't trust him until I see it. He's just something is definitely up with his game. He fired his caddy. New caddy did him no good. He was no good at the Masters once again. So he might even be get worse before it gets better. But there's a ton of guys to go over, a ton of guys to talk about. You know, we got your Siwoos who almost won this tournament. Chris Kirk, who came through for me yesterday, got me back into the hunt. 
after barely making the cut at the Masters. Remember, Hovland is out going down the line. I mean, Tagala, Bradley, uh, Sung Jay. When are we going to see Sung Jay come back and do something? Uh, going to be interesting. That is for sure. So, in the background is an early look at a top 10 player pool. Not ranked in any order. Not an overall ranking either. It was just kind of like 10 guys I parsed together uh, that will maybe include some pivots, maybe include some value plays. That's why I attached a V to those last three guys down there. I don't know if Cam Davis is going to be a value player, go overlooked. Uh, the way he finishes this tournament, he could be 7,500 and then he's going to be very popular, or he could be 8,700. His price will probably dictate a lot of his ownership. So, I just wanted to lay that out there. Uh, lots to do. Shane Lowry is on my list. He's currently not eligible for this golf tournament, but I feel like he's going to find his way in after Sunday. I don't know if he's going to do it by way of a good finish at the Masters or just by way of a couple of players withdrawing, but he's right there. He's like ranked 36th in the world, so he, he should be uh, – should be in. He plays well here, so keep an eye on him. That'll do it for the research show. I appreciate you kicking it off for, uh, with me. Best of luck this week. See you soon.